Hi, this is Simon Upstall and welcome to another tutorial for Apple Motion. And today I want to show you a very useful technique for attaching on-screen controls to points of a shape. And we'll be making this handy little highlight generator for Final Cut. So let's get going. OK, for this project, I'm going with 1920 1080 frame rate of 25 frames a second and a duration of four seconds. So the first thing I'm going to do is grab the Bezier tool, make sure I've got the overlays turned on. There we overlays and also the grid. So turn on the grid. It's going to make it a little bit easier. So as I say, with Bezier tool selected, let's click down here. Let's click and drag in the center there to make a Bezier and then just click down here and then press enter. So obviously I've got an outline only for this, no fill. And I've got a width of 10 for the time being and color of white. So I'm not going to get too carried away here. I've got the dynamic guides turned on, which is actually quite useful. Oh, I have, no, I haven't actually got the dynamic guides turned on, but it's snapping to the grid anyway. So. That makes life a little bit easier. So I'm going to drag that handle all the way out to there and this one all the way out to there. And this is the sort of thing that we want to start with. So I'm going to just disable the overlays and we can get to work. So what we want to be able to do is we want to attach an on-screen control to each of these points. And it's quite a bit more complicated than you would think. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to come over to the library and content and we're going to type in the search bar crosshair. So I'm going to go with small gray. I'm going to drag that out into a new group and I'm going to drag it down till it's sort of next to that first point there. Then I'm going to duplicate it, drag this one to the top there and duplicate it again. Drag this one down to there. We probably ought to label those as left, center, right. So we'll come back when I've done that. So now we can think about attaching our Bezier points to these crosshairs. So I'm going to select the Bezier. I'm going to come to Behaviors, Shape and Track Points. And I'm going to select the crosshair left. I'm going to switch to Attach to Source. Now this point here is actually point one of our Bezier shape. So I want to turn on Track 1 only like that. And I'm just going to click this reset button here to make sure it's nice and selected. So then if I move the crosshair, you can see that our point moves with it. So that's good. And then we can do the same thing with the other two points. Now it's not a good idea to duplicate the track points because it starts to go wrong. Motion doesn't like that. So let's just come to behaviors and shape and just add a new one. Let's add crosshair C. Let's again switch to attach to source. Let's turn off track one, track two and hit this button here just to line it all up. You see that did a little bit of a wiggle and, and attached itself nicely to the crosshair. So let's do it one more time. So shape track points. Let's select crosshair right. Let's select attach to source. Let's turn off track one and track two and just give our track three a bit of a nudge to make sure it's connected. So then I think they are all attached like so. That's looking pretty good. So now what we need to do is the more complicated bit of attaching these crosshairs to an on-screen control. So first thing I'm going to do is come over to the library and drag in a color solid. And then we need to find a an on-screen control that we can use. And we're going to use the simplest of them all, which is poke. And you can see poke just gives us this solitary positional control. And that's going to be good for our purposes. So I'm going to turn off the color solid and I'm going to position this down here. And I'm going to call it poke left. I mean, we probably ought to call it on-screen control, but it doesn't really matter, that's good. So we want to attach our crosshair left to that on-screen control. So to do that, we have to do it one position point at a time. We can't attach both positions to the poke center. So I'm just going to reset the position like that. And then I'm going to add parameter behavior link. I'm going to grab the color solid. I'm going to select filters, poke left, center, X. And now you see it's over here. Why is it over here? Well, that's because of the different coordinate system used by the 
those on-screen controls. So we need to enter negative 0.5. And now from the X point of view, we're back where we should be. So we've linked our X. Now let's link our Y. Again, best not to duplicate because it will cause you trouble. So let's again carefully add parameter behavior link, select crosshair left, select the Sorry, uh, what have I done? I've done the wrong thing here. We need to select the color solid. Filters poke left, center, Y. Again, we've got that offset issue, so we need negative 0.5. And now if we grab, actually let's turn off the crosshairs because they're starting to confuse things. So if we grab our on-screen control, that is now driving the shape via that intermediate crosshair. And we need to do the same thing with the others so let's add a couple more poke filters, distortion and poke. I'm just going to duplicate this one. I'm going to call the first one of those poke center and the third one I'm going to call poke right. And so we need to do exactly the same thing here with the crosshair center. Let's reset this. Let's link the X to the color solid filters, poke center X. X offset of negative 0.5. Uh, let's do the same thing with the Y position. Right click, add parameter behavior, link, select the color solid. This is very tiresome, I know, but I'm just gonna walk you through the whole thing. Center Y. Again, we need to enter that negative 0.5 offset. Uh, why is that like it is? Oh, there's our poke there. There we go, that's there. Where's our right hand poke? Oh, let's stick it over there so it makes a bit more sense. Okay, finally, the crosshair right. Let's reset the transform, select the X position, add parameter behavior link, select the color solid, select filters, poke right, center X, negative 0.5 for the offset. And finally, let's link up the Y. So add parameter behavior link, select the color solid, select filters, poke right, center Y and negative 0.5 for the offset. And now we are indeed all set up. So here's our left, I'm gonna drag it over like that. Here's our right, let's drag it over to make a nice shape like that. And here's our center, let's drag it down a little bit like that. And really this is our effect. So what we would need to do is we would need to publish various things like, for example, the outline width. So let's publish that. Let's publish the brush color. We might as well publish the brush opacity just for fun. These start and end caps are worth publishing, I think, uh, because it's quite nice for the start cap to have an arrow like that. Actually, leave it, let's leave it at round. So let's publish those start cap, publish, end cap, publish. So the only remaining thing to do is to add a little bit of animation. So you'll notice that if I animate the first point offset like that, we get this right on behavior. So let's let's actually do it with the right on behavior. I don't know why I'm um, getting carried away here. Let's come to shape and right on. And you'll see that that writes on like that. So we don't actually want it to be writing on for the total duration. So I'm going to come to 12 frames on the timeline with the write on behavior selected. I'm going to come to mark and mark out and that nicely wipes on like that. And so then we need to protect that animation by setting a marker. So I've opened up the timeline editor. I'm going to right click here on the timeline bar, ruler bar, add marker, and then I'm going to edit marker and I'm going to set the type to build in optional. So this bit of the clip will be able to be extended or shrunk at, at will, but this animation will stay exactly 12 frames regardless of what we do with the rest of it. So actually just let's set it up a little bit more fancily. Let's just have a nicer brush color. Let's go for red for the brush color. And let's have 25 for the or 20 for the width maybe. And let's, actually set that start cap to arrow. Actually, well, I remember we should probably also publish this arrow length and arrow width. These are two controls that become available when you select arrow for the cap and we can 
increase the arrow length like that. Actually, probably that's probably better, isn't it? 750 is a nicer arrow. So a couple of things we need to do before we publish. We need to come to these poke controls and we need to make sure that each of these publish OSC checkboxes is enabled because without those, we won't see those on-screen controls in Final Cut. So then I think we're gonna save this or rather convert this to a generator. So convert project to generator, and then we'll come to file and save as, and then I'm gonna save it um, magic marker. And then we can come over to Final Cut and check out our handiwork. So here we are in Final Cut. I've got a still loaded up and I'm going to grab from the generators TKY Magic Marker like that. And there we go. There it is. And there it's right on. And we can adjust these on-screen controls to taste. Probably not the best still to be using. But anyway, you can see how easy it is to just adjust this, create a sort of instant call out. Is that what they call them in the parlance of our times. I don't know, don't really like that expression at all. So we can change the width and the colour and all the rest of it and do all that what we want with our uh, stars and end caps, so bevel or whatever. So there you go, quite a useful technique to know about, quite a handy little generator that we've created. Hope that's been useful. Thanks very much for watching. I'll see you again soon.